-hmm. And so I, I feel like I, someone answered your question, but with regards, just to bring it back, with regards to the number for me personally, it varies because like Leanne said, you know, it's a wide range of things. So yeah. that's where I am personally, yeah. Okay, that makes a lot that makes a lot of sense. Are we typically then dealing with small to medium businesses? Uh, the definition in the UK is between 50 to 250 employees is what's known as a small to medium enterprise. Would that typically be a, your three ladies uh, customer base and Leanne? Um, the people that come to you, why do they come to you? Well, you know, mostly for art at this point, you know, they're looking for art in a personal home setting or a business setting, you know, so when you're talking about corporations, you know, I do deal with, with that kind of thing, but in my team building, I, I kind of forgot about that part of it, you know, cause I'm not actively doing it as much as I used to before the pandemic. So now I've kind of put that on hold, which, um, but to Lynette's point, you know, I completely agree that those smaller companies are much more willing to take the risks. It's an interesting phenomenon, right? You know, with, when you get to those bigger companies, they are yes. a lot more restricted. I, they have a lot more, I guess, that at risk. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I want to go circle back to this whole thing. Are you guys artists? Is, is all of us artists? That's the huge thing I tap into. And I, I like to try to remind people in the corporate setting, because I came from the corporate world. Um, I worked there for 20 years, was held hostage and broke out. <laughs> and that's when I realized how great of a need there is for creativity in those corporate spaces. So now I go back into, um, it's almost like when you break out of prison and then you come back in to help, <laughs> help them out. In my team building, it's all about reminding them you were all wildly creative. And, and if you're an engineer, if you're a networker, if you're a copywriter, whatever you are doing, you're wildly talented and creative in, in what you are doing. That is your art. So make no mistake about that. Engineers, they're always having to come up with a new way to do something, right? And, and, the, and the most renowned engineers are the ones who take the biggest risks, right? And they're the ones who's called crazy in the beginning. You can't do that. That's not, not not been done before. Scary, scary, scary. And they end up paving the way. You know, that's how cures are done, right? Like people in the medical field, they are creative artists in their own right. You know, so art, I know we do get stuck in saying, oh, well, you're an artist. You know, you're the only creative one. That is such baloney. So let's throw that right out the window because we were born creative. That's what sets us apart actually from instinctual animals, you know? Oh, yeah. So that's a gift that we're given and all of you are using your creativity in your own way. And oh, even engineers, I, I love to turn that up on its head. I'm like, you were wildly creative, go out and use it, do something crazy and wonderful, you know, create something. That's so, a very, um profound uh perspective because i very much agree um uh, have you seen the um sir ken robinson ted talk uh do do schools kill creativity he says that basically so he's a renowned educationalist and he says that you know when a child first goes to school four five six it's, it's about play but then it quickly becomes about being right or wrong and if you're wrong you feel bad about it and so what happens is and you can see it so a six-year-old girl will be in a queue at the supermarket and she'll be talking to her invisible friends and dancing and playing and not giving a shit and then by seven they're suddenly aware mm -hmm. in this horrible way mm. 